we're going to do a fall prep container garden project where I'm going to kind of MacGyver a lot of different things to get the effect that I want. And also because I want to use things that I already have so I don't have to go to the store. I just, I'm somebody that doesn't like to run errands and I like to use things that I already have on hand. And that's my question of the day. Are you guys like that too? Or are you somebody that really enjoys going to your garden center or to the hardware store if you don't have what you need? I am somebody that doesn't like to run errands. And if I can make do with something I already have, then that thrills me no end, which leads me to this container garden project. Now, I think I have showed you how I have really torn out a lot of dead things. I've cut back some things and I'm trying to get my dining deck, my dining garden room and my bistro garden room really in tip top shape because the weather has gotten so much nicer and in the mornings it's cool and in the mm -hmm. evenings it's cooler. Stuart is nodding his head. And so I've been doing a little primping and pruning and grooming. Stuart even noticed and said everything looks really, really nice. So I am wanting to start putting together some foliage containers that will kind of be fall ready once things like mums and ornamental peppers and asters begin to arrive because they're not here yet. And I really think it would be premature to go ahead and start planting some of those things because then the blooms will just fry and they won't look their best when I'm ready for the cooler temperatures of fall. But I can get a jump on that with some other things and that's what I'm gonna talk about today. So I wanna make a pedestal saucer shaped container and I didn't have a saucer shaped container like that I'm always talking about with a lower profile so I decided that I could kind of MacGyver the same look by using one of my really large hanging baskets now this is one of mine from my QVC line but you could get any kind of large hanging basket that you could get at your garden center that you might have just lying around I have several of these I didn't do a lot of hanging baskets this summer because it was simply too hot they dried out too fast and it just wasn't the optimal year to do that but I I'm going to make a pedestal container garden and I can then reposition this easily because it's lightweight any place on my dining deck or in the bistro once it really is flushed out and beautiful but I wanted to put out some some I want to get some cuttings started so that it will start really getting full and lush even before I then introduce my fall plants later so all I've done is take one of these plant stands and you can get these at all different heights. Again, I've got some a little bit fancier, smaller version of this on my QVC line, but you can get them anywhere. This one I probably got at Lowe's or at Home Depot, but it's got the same wrought iron black finish as the hanging basket. And I can just kind of nestle it into, into place. Now that may not be exactly straight but I can do that later. Now the other thing I wanted to do was use things that I already had around that would serve as kind of the base for the container itself. I don't like the look of a plastic liner nor do I really like the look of just a coir liner and I didn't have any tool like I've used in the past to kind of keep squirrels out and birds from eating the tool. What I did have was a large swatch of burlap and so what I did was cut a large circle of burlap. I cut it to form to sit inside the form of this hanging basket. And you'll see I'm not even taking off the hanger itself. I'm leaving that on because in the future I may want to hang it. Now, another thing that I wanted to do was I, I didn't want to go ahead and plan and plant just into this burlap liner because it wouldn't have great planting integrity. I also didn't want to use a plastic trash bag or anything like that because I try to minimize my use of, of bags, but I did have, some of these potting sacks 
that I had used earlier in the summer. Some of them were starting to break down a little bit, but I thought, oh my gosh, I can just cut them to fit. Stuart, aren't it's it, a, it, I, it's a pretty I realized great idea, what it was huh? and was like, oh wow, that's actually yeah, really, and, really and actually, smart. Yeah, <laughs> and I actually used a couple of them. And the thing is, I also, the dimensions on these, and I can't remember exactly what these are called, planting pockets or uh, there's a whatever. company called smart pot that's all S I smart know, but... pots or whatever yeah. but they the other thing was the containers weren't ever the exact size of the the fancy container that I wanted to put them in so for me it wasn't a loss to cut them up so I've cut them up and I've got maybe just a few little gaps and then to hold everything in place while I put in the potting soil so it won't collapse as I'm doing so. I've just taken some clothespins. I love wooden clothespins. Can I just say that? And look at this. This one says Johnny on it. So this must have been at one time did something Johnny did. Did you know they Johnny have a did. different name in the video world? What are they called? C-47s. Why? Oh, because... That's, that's their actual name, I think, or something. That's what I was taught when I... Yeah, anyways. Oh, side, so side when you're note. putting screening Well, yeah, you use them a lot because like yeah. they can hold up. Uh, yeah. Okay, well, I, I, I did stuff. notice that I need to get some more. So this is just holding this in place. You could also use just some of these bull clips. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of the mix. I made a fresh new batch of this soilless potting mix. Stuart, we need to put up a card to, and when we say card, you're just going to go up to the corner and there will be a link that you can click on or you can click on it later after you've, you, you've there watched. Is an, there, uh, point to that corner again. Oh, uh, there, I'll put it in the right spot. Over there, there should be an eye and any time throughout the video, you should be able to click on that little eye in that little circle and it should bring up all the links in the video at once. Now that's on your computer more so than your phone, but there could be something similar on your phone. I'll try okay, to Okay, and there are also, these links will be in the description. But we did a previous <laughs> video where I talked about how to make soilless potting mix using coir fiber and some fine pine mulch, some vermiculite or perlite, some osmocote and some sand, and I have already made a batch of that. This is the second batch that I'm making. Now I'm doing this. This kind of mix is actually ideal for hanging baskets. Why? Because it's a soilless potting mix and it won't be too heavy. It won't be prohibitively heavy. Now I've watered this down a little bit because sometimes dry soil is hard to hydrate. Though there is a tip to doing that, which I'll share at another time. But I'm just filling this up. If you don't have any of this fresh soil mix, if you're using regular potting soil, then you can reuse some old potting soil at a 50-50 blend of oil, old potting soil with new potting soil. And then I, on these containers, I always add Osmocote to it, and I have showed you Osmocote before. And by the way, the link for Osmocote is in the description below. All of the links that I talk about, all the products that I talk, talk about over time are linked below. Yeah, we try to keep them there. So try to keep them there. Them. And I, okay. Yeah, how full are you going to get it? Okay, right now I'm going to get it about that full. Now the reason I'm not doing it any fuller, more full, I don't know what the correct <laughs> term there is, is because I'm going to do a couple of different things. So I have been taking coleus cuttings from my existing coleus plants pretty much all summer long. I've been both potting them up and then I've used a lot of them indoors as, oh, just almost while they were rooting as just kind of cut flowers. So I've got two glass containers here filled with rooted cuttings. Ooh, that one's real see-through. Let me get a yeah. shot of it. You can see all of those beautiful roots coming out of there. So I'm gonna use some of this that's been rooted and by the way all I did was just take a cutting 
and stick it in water. This coleus, I think, is probably the easiest thing to root. It is just so, so easy. It's a tender, fleshy annual, so it's so easy to root. But then I also Where's she going? Have some pots that have been on my plant stand. And by the way, exciting news, you guys. Everything uh, collides. If, if everything in the universe is, is copacetic, then my QVC line next year is going to have that three-tiered plant stand or something very similar in my QVC line because mm. you guys are always asking me about that, that tiered plant stand. So I have two pots of this that I already started. It's pretty much pretty, I would say, rather established inside this potting soil. So I'm going to use a combination of pots that I have already started. I'm being a little bit brutal here, but that's okay. <laughs> and this is, okay, so I'm going to add more soil. In fact, I'm just going to use the remainder of this. And that just helps it be like acclimated? Yeah, it, well, it. It, it will, it's not so much that as it will be at the proper height. Oh, okay. So see, I've got a chunk here and I want it to be at the proper height because I want it to be already begin to cascade over the side. And that's one of the reasons I'm planting it now, is I want this all to get established, well rooted in, and full by the time I add the plants that I'm gonna get for fall, whether that's mums, whether that's whatever. I'm not even sure what that will be because I haven't um, I haven't purchased them yet. It's a beautiful thing. And this is all that coleus. Talk about getting free plants. Just take cuttings of what you already have. I've also started taking cuttings of my dragon wing begonias. And I'm trying to loosen this. And for those interested in cuttings, we have an amazing cuttings video. Oh, series. yes, yes. We did that. Very we have actually several. Yeah, that's true. And I would not do you do this with good scissors, but these are those, not that these aren't good scissors, but these are just the dollar store scissors. I wouldn't use it for some of my, um, my more valuable topiary pruning tools. Okay, so here's a big, big section. So this is why I didn't fill it too full, Stuart, because I knew that this was gonna come in here. Now, what I like about this arrangement is I love the way there's a color, color echo with this chartreuse variegated yellow and green coleus, and then this coleus has some green edging, yeah, so there'll of... be a nice color echo. And then I also have, oh, that's pretty. see, look at those beautiful roots there, Stuart. Roots, Hold roots. Hold right there, I'll get a shot, yeah, there we go. Yeah. And I can just take these. There's always a few troublemakers that don't go ahead and, and, and root, or a few dead leaves, but that's okay. So I'm just going to stick these in here. I'm not even really going to separate them too much because I want them to immediately have fullness. That it does. Now, those of you um, around the world say you think it's sometimes odd that we Americans don't plant down the side of, of the hanging basket as well as the top. And I tend to agree with you because I think it looks neater when it's 360, and if I wanted to plant the sides, I could just by puncturing the sides and putting them in there. But remember, this is going to be on a plant stand, and I'm going to largely see it from the top. The other thing is that this is hopefully going to get so full that all of this is going to be profuse and kind of cascade out the side. Who knows what else might end up in here? 
um, it might be some kind of edible landscape thing. I might put some cuttings of basil in here. Um, maybe some of my own peppers. But right now, I am just concentrating on the coleus because I want it. How, like, I guess I'm going to shoot closer when you okay. put the next one in so they can see how you're okay. doing it. Okay, so here I'm going to want to create a pocket here where I can put in something else later on down the line. So I'm leaving kind of a gap. And you're just about an inch down? Is yeah, it? just about. Well, when oh, I, I see pot yeah, them, I I'm going to put the them back. down as far as the roots go. But I'm leaving a few intentional gaps because this is where I envision the other seasonal color to go. Now, this is completely arbitrary how you decide to do this. This is just where I'm positioning my own cuttings. You can position yours completely symmetrically. I tend to like things that are, are in this case, just a little bit asymmetrical. It could also be that... That's the art of it, right? That's the art of it, is just making it do what you want to do. Sometimes I find that I like the way it looks with just one singular plant, and I don't want to add anything else to it. And sometimes I won't add anything else. But it is time for these cuttings to start getting established. They've been inside for a long time. And they will probably, they will probably droop and complain a little bit because they have been inside in more shade. And even though I'll put them in shade out here, still, they haven't been out in the heat. But now you see how I have, oh, you know what, Stuart? I think I might have a couple more cuttings inside that I'm gonna put in there. I'll be right back, Stuart. You can kind of show how it's coming along. Got something, Susu? Man, trying to trying to sing and move the camera at the same time slow was hard. Stuart's than I mom's thought. inside. I told her I said I forgot something, Susu. Okay, so I had I forgot I had a few cuttings of basil that I was also rooting, and why not? Put this in here and see if I can kind of get it started. It may work, it may not, but it's a gardening risk worth taking. Absolutely. And it will make it very fragrant. And yes, Hubs has really, he doesn't complain about too many things, but he has been complaining that I haven't had lots of pesto this summer. And it's because I haven't had a lot of basil because it's just been that kind of summer and I never really got it planted or established. So I'm going to put that in there. Okay. Is there purple basil? Oh yeah. I yeah, there's so. purple yeah, basil. I'm trying to think all the different it's colors. Kind basil. of called purple ruffles basil. Okay. Um, now, you'll see that there's enough gaps in here that I could easily drop in three, four, five, four inch whatever four inch mums, four inch kale, four inch aster, four inch anything, uh, maybe marigolds, anything that kind of speaks to fall, but I can do that later. By the time I'm ready to drop those in there, these things will already be established and putting on lots of growth. Now, one final thing that I'm gonna do, so I'm not gonna waste the water here. Uh -huh. and water this in. And by the way, I did add some slow release Osmocote so that will keep feeding this even while I'm gone. And this is a good thing to do like I'm doing it before I go 
away for Johnny's wedding. And while I'm gone, it will be doing the work. And when I get home, it will really have filled out. So the other thing I'm gonna do here, Stuart, if we can get closer, get closer is I'm gonna pinch out some of these. Okay, so I'm gonna pinch out the tip of this. And do you see those two little buds there? Yes. Okay, so by pinching out this one stem, it's going to produce two stems. And that will be the same with all of these things I'm pinching out, which will contribute to its overall fullness, its growth, it will make it bushier. And nice. if I so chose, I could then root these, I could root this that I just pinched out but this will make all of these. Pretty cool we figured all this stuff out. Uh, yeah, isn't it? And, and that, hasn't been, that hasn't been a recent discovery. No, I know, I'm just yeah, saying it's just, pretty neat. Yeah, yeah, that, that as humans, we discovered that. How to manipulate plants. By the way, fuller. here's a stem, and it's got just a few little. Sure it's not a worm. No, but it kind of looks like it, doesn't it? A few little roots coming out of it. Where are the roots? Let's see. Oh, with ice. Right there. Don't move it. Let me hold it still. Okay. Well, okay. Or trust me, <laughs> there's some little roots coming out of this. Now you may ask, but there's no leaves. So can you still plant this? Yes, you can. I can still plant this and it will produce leaves as long as it's the, the roots that I, roots or roots, that's another thing that you guys hey, comment you on, on, on pronunciation that's in there. Okay, now, this is my opportunity I I say roots. to tell you that on Sunday, We are going to do a, on our members only live, we're gonna do a giveaway of one of these giraffe hose reels that I love so much. So see all I'm doing. Wait, this Sunday's the trellis, right? Oh, I, I lied, <laughs> I lied. I don't know why I can't get that through my head. Okay, well my opportunity the to tell you. The giraffe is coming y'all, it's just that not the, the, Yes, that the metal trellis, the metal arbor, we're giving away one of those from Costway. And we're doing that tomorrow. It'll be two o'clock live. You'll want to, and you do have to be present, present to win. Present and chatting. Uh -oh. is, it a, is it a members only one? Is it? Uh, no, this is members only. Okay, the yeah. big things, you guys, the big things are members only. But when we do public ones, we, do we give away stuff. yes, everyone. And that I didn't wait for that to get fully pressurized before I started watering. There. And this has good drainage too. So as I said, these will complain a little bit, but that's okay because I have faith that they will stand up and fly right. That's another funny thought. Linda walks out in her garden and hears her plants complaining at her. Yeah, they're just, <laughs> yeah. Hubs is complaining about basil. <laughs> Stewart is complaining about me not making the right, uh, or specifying the right product giveaway. Oh, right, My yeah. plants are complaining. <laughs> I am so picked upon. The other thing you could do, if you wanted, though it would be a little bit trickier, is you could plant some seeds in here in the bare areas, but you'd have to really make sure that they had good sunlight and good exposure. Me, I am just going to wait until I am ready for that fall punch of color to plop in here. And then after I'm completely finished planting it with the fall color and everything, I'll simply tuck in any kind of burlap that remains around the side, If I, but I may not need to. By then the stuff that's gonna cascade over the side, ooh, for example, lantana would be great. Uh, lantana or something, something purple would also, this kind of plum color purple would be beautiful. So once I get it completely planted in its entirety, then I will do something about the rough edges. I will pretty it all up and I will put it into place. But right now it is just going to get established as part of my, my pre-fall decor thought process. So this is just, this is how easy this will be to move. 
I guess I could just do it from the bottom. So you could either do it in two parts or as usual, I'm not moving stuff out of the way <laughs> and almost tripped. Stuart is laughing per Only usual. Okay. So yeah. then if I wanted it to go in here where I took out that dead U for a punch of color here by the, by the back porch, I can do that. If I wanted to put it a little bit closer to the seating area, I could do that. It would have been smarter which means I didn't do it if I had moved it into place before I watered it. But nevertheless, this gives you an idea. And I also wanted to move it over here to show you that that dead U is gone. Yeah, I hadn't even focused on that yet. It looks open. Yeah, it looks much more open. And you'll see that there's a little bit of brick around the perimeter here. And I am going to complete that brick and install some more brick that kind of completes it and closes it off at that handrail because I don't want it to scream, look, I just took out a dead plant. <laughs> and then I'll top dress that area with gravel once, once I do it. But there you go. What do you think, Stuart? Did I, I MacGyver that I pretty well? Yeah, I think you're a plant whisperer. Yes. Well, it doesn't, it doesn't look like it it's good. going to right now, but I think you can see what my vision is. And so as long as I'm full of questions today, here's my next question. If you were me, what kind of seasonal fall color would you put in there? And yes, I will probably, depending on the color of whatever it is that I put in there, yes, I will probably also tuck some gourds and some fun seasonal berries, maybe something in there that will be just lovely. And hopefully, Stuart, I'll have something that looks as good as the hanging basket that we shot and that there's a beautiful image of in the book. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Stuart, did I forget anything? I don't think so. The dog next door apparently thinks I did forget something, but I don't speak fluent canine. We look forward so, to seeing all you on Sunday. So there you go. Yes, everybody, make sure to join. These member ones are a little bit more intimate. It's much more likely that I'll see your comment and get to answer them. And if you want to become a member, then we will provide a link. And some of you I know have gotten frustrated. You said, I've tried to join. I'm not sure how. I keep going in circles. Well, just send an email to support at lindavotter.com and we will mail you the link directly or put a comment below and we will comment with the link or you guys know how to find me. So, or you can bother Stuart. <laughs> yes, so, but the easiest way is probably just send an email to support at lindavotter.com if you've got really questions of any kind, of any kind. So there you go. You guys enjoy the rest of your Saturday. Well, here you go. Here is my outfit of the day. My earrings are some that I got at, I don't know, some, <laughs> on a, I just remember I got them on a college campus somewhere years and years ago. They're kind of a painted copper. Uh, my favorite gloves. You guys have asked me about this a number of times. So I'm going to tell you again. Right now, these are my favorite. They're cool jobs and Yourself. I buy them multiples. Oop. There you go. Sorry. <laughs> I didn't know which there way the go. print was. Cool jobs, and, and I get these uh, in multiples, and I bought a whole bunch of them recently. My t-shirt is just a Target sleeveless tank top. Uh, my britches or my overalls came from Amazon. I will try to put a link, and let me tell you, I love these so much. I think a lot of you guys love them too. My outfit question of the day is, have you guys ordered a pair of these? And if so, do you love them as much as I do? <laughs> Somebody asked me why I sometimes have have a bandana or something tied to my waist and a lot of times it's just that I have something to wipe my hands on or to wipe my brow one of the two when I get when I get a little a little glistening and my shoes are just some of those fit form sandals that I I bought online so Stuart have I forgotten anything I do not think okay, so there you go there's your outfit of the day